Welcome back to the GP Llama YouTube channel where I have another Zwift update to go through. The second one for the year, so Zwift are sticking to their plan of more frequent game updates. So in this video, I'll cover off what's new in Game Client version 1.57. We'll have a look at who won Pig Zwift for 2024, if in fact we have reached Pig Zwift already. And I'll give you a quick peek of my Climb Portal Climb of the Month testing. This month it's Bulunga Hill, which is a famous hill from the Tour Down Under over in Adelaide, where before heading over, I put myself to the test here in the Llama Lab, and then I went out and rode the climb in real life. How close were things? Well, if you're on acid, those graphics are pretty much gonna be spot on. But all jokes aside, they were actually pretty close. I'll cover the details later in the video. All right, kicking off with Game Client version 1.57 and the release notes here. Starting off with, well, there's a bit of history in this one. I'm gonna deep dive the very first dot point here, and that is erg mode now has power smoothing enabled. Their line item states, power values displayed during workouts are now more stable when using devices that broadcast power readings at 10 Hertz, with the three second power average setting enabled. Now, winding back a few years now, I came up with a list of 101 things that I'd love to see fixed in Zwift. I don't think I did a video on that one because no one wants to sit here going through 101 things that need to be fixed. But that list was provided to Zwift, and I can tell you that line item made the top 20. So it's finally fixed. What's it mean? What's it all about? Let's jump over and have a look. Okay, lots going on here on screen. Let me explain what we're seeing before I switch it over to the three second power smoothing within erg mode to see what effect that does have. Now I'm using a trainer that has an update or refresh rate of around four hertz. You can see that number there on screen in the main HUD, jumping around plus or minus, well up to 20 watts, as it's chasing that set point of 200 watts. That's not uncommon for trainers that have no smoothing within erg mode. Down at the bottom left, I've also got the companion app showing the same numbers. Now I'm gonna switch that over to power display three seconds. We can do that during the workout. And the number in the HUD is a lot smoother, sticking to that set point a lot closer, plus or minus six or three watts. You can see it bouncing around there and looking a lot more stable and I guess easier on the eye. Now there's no physical change to the experience on the pedals. Things remain the same. The overall average still remains the same. That number just isn't jumping around as much. Now over on the companion app, that number still is bouncing around a little bit. So I suspect the smoothing is only applied to the in-game experience, not to the companion app. Maybe not yet anyway. And down there on the graph, the power graph, which is in yellow mostly for this section, that also remains unchanged. So appearing to graph the raw or instant power from the trainer as it's received. So from what I can tell, this three second erg mode power smoothing only applies to the HUD up there where I've put the arrow and is definitely a welcome addition. Now again, just before I leave this screen here, I suspect the reason this has taken so long for Zwift to implement is that back in the day, and by back in the day, I mean about 10 years ago, most smart trainers would be smoothing that erg mode power data themselves, giving you a false or a fake sense of smoothness in your pedal stroke. Nowadays, we're seeing that less and less with new equipment reporting the real power that you're doing, which does jump up and down quite a bit because humans are very, very terrible motors. So this is a welcome change in Zwift, and I'm glad to see it finally here. Okay, that was way too much information for one single line item there, but hey, look, that's what I do. Way too much technical information because I'm sure someone found that interesting. Well, I did. Okay, skipping through the next ones, nice and quick. A few issues fixed with Ride Streak. In particular, there was a Ride Streak screen could not be dismissed via the Zwift Companion app. Testing that today on my ride, that disappeared just fine when clicking on the Companion app. And lastly, a couple of updates there to Repack Rush. Fix an issue where Repack Rush report screen could potentially not be dismissed via the companion app. So again, more interaction with the companion app being fixed. Fix an issue that caused the enroll button to appear when already enrolled in the Fast Track Fitness Training Plan and visual improvements to the Repack Rush report, including improved leaderboard readability. Now I forgot to do Repack Rush today on my test ride of 157. So unfortunately I don't have any overlays of that to show. Okay, now on to Peak Zwift 2024 and who would be crowned the winner? Now we were thrown a curveball with Peak Swift, pulling up the numbers here. The second Tuesday of January, which is typically when we see Peak Swift, we had 42,452 riders online at one single time. The following Tuesday, which we assumed would have been even higher, wasn't. We had 41,716, that was last Tuesday. 
And I thought that was it. That was game over for the year. I thought peak Swift was going to be that 42.452 number. Wasn't the case. Last night, Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. UK time, we have a new benchmark. 43,335. The tool that I used to test how many riders are online at once came up with 43,314, so very close. But someone did send a screenshot with 43,335. So that's it. That's Peak Swift 2024, unless it happens again next week, which I hope it doesn't because pulling up the leaderboard here and crowning the winner, that would be me. Meaning I have a win streak of two, but no extra XP for that. Maybe next year. All right, and finally today, a quick look at me putting Climb Portal to the test. Just how real are these virtual routes that Zwift are putting on this Climb Portal? Can they be compared to outdoors? And how close would my times be when putting myself to the test? So here's an interesting one. I've just ridden Wollonga Hill, or Old Wollonga KOM, uh, one of the famous climbs from the Tour Down Under, which is featuring on Zwift this month in Climb Portal. Now, before I came over here, I did a climb up there as a bit of a test. I did 12 minutes 41 at 320 watts. So 320 watts, 12 minutes 41 for that climb. I've just done it here in real life. Uh, 12 minutes 43 at about 340 watts. So two seconds slower, 20 watts more. However, I've got two drink bottles on, I've got spares, I've got stuff in my pocket, so I am weighing a little heavier. So I'll, uh, I'll muck around with some math at the uh, at the end of the day and have a look how close this was but uh, pretty close I would think. The only difference is I'm riding on the left hand side of the road. On Zwift we're on the right hand side of the road. Hmm. Anyway, interesting little test. Another variable I forgot to mention was the wind and this is well, this is where the wind is blowing from in real time. That's the climb there from Wollonga all the way up where I've just come. So it was across kind of a crosswind a little bit it wasn't it wasn't a tailwind there was no assistance it wasn't a straight headwind so 12 k's an hour northeasterly so i think i'll put that in uh maybe best bike split and we'll run some numbers and see how close it was but i'm done it's the hardest effort i've done in a long time <laughs> all right time to roll ridge road and penny's hill road i think it is if you know that one it's a brilliant climb i uh, had quite a few races out here actually over the years so it's always good to get back on, well, not quite home roads, but familiar roads. Just gotta watch the snakes. So there's just a quick overview that I put up on Instagram. If you'd like to see the full video and the full breakdown analysis of that, let me know in the comments below, and I can put together those two videos with all my ride stats from both indoors and out. I did make a ride for my own bike by going so hard outdoors, so if I need to replicate that indoors, I'm gonna have to go just as hard. Maybe. Swift doesn't have wind, does it? So it should be a little quicker. All right, and with that, thanks for watching. As always, if you'd like to see more videos like this, hit subscribe. Also hit thumbs up if you've enjoyed this content, and we'll see you soon.